الحمد لله الذي جعل في طاعة الصادق الأمين الفتح والنصرة. I know it's supposed to be something uh, formal uh, to address in a formal manner, but I thought, inshallah, I'll, I'll do the more relaxed approach. We, I'll be sitting, inshallah, and and trying to speak of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The topic is it's quite a vast topic. The topic that was given to us was the inheritance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this topic, as you can see, these various topics, leadership of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have the importance of dhikr, and we have various other other topics that is given to the speakers. But I, I personally feel if we speak about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is such a vast person sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they, we can't really choose one particular topic about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In every form of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam is perfection. In the, in the aspect of of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being. In the way he was with his family, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the way he was as a leader, everything came down to perfection. But inshallah, I just for the for the brothers who are here and the millions of malaika who are here as well, witnessing the mahboobin who came for the love of the Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Another my my shaykh, he said. When you speak about the Prophet وسلم, they know that the malaika of the muqarrabin are they. So we might not be thousands in number, but know well that the malaika are here in thousands. I, 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 was, I was given a, to, a talk to speak about the Shaykh and the Murid, but I requested from Ansar if I can speak about something else. What I'd like to speak about is unknown to me as well. And so I thought, let me rather speak from my heart about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whatever I say may, may come to your heart as well. Because sometimes we prepare these amazing speeches and everything is written down dot to dot. And everybody goes out and everybody says, wow, what an academic talk it is given. Because I've attended conferences and everybody speaks of the page, and eventually when all of us leave, we look at each other and say, what was spoken about? So inshallah, I hope I can speak from my heart what really drives me to the love of the Rasulullah wasallam, And hopefully, inshallah, that you can arrive at a place that can also love the Rasulullah wasallam. To me, when I think about the Rasulullah wasallam, I really look at the effect he had on people. It's easy for a person to become an amazing person within yourself. And you can have goals, and you can set goals, and you can have your adhkar, and you can do your awrad, and you can do your tarbiyah. But that's for yourself. But if a person can have an effect on those around him, it shows the capacity of the person within himself. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was just Umar. But when he suddenly met the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came Umar al-Khattab. Abu Bakr radiallahu if who was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? We didn't even know they would exist in a person like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes in the contact with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he becomes a Siddiq. And the same can apply to Salman al-Farisi, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. If we know Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar is really a rebel among the Sahaba who comes from a, from a tribe who really, who was really like, you know, in our terms, thugs. That was their, that was their job. They just do like hijack caravans. But Abu Dhar becomes this person who, who, who we now quote in hadith. 
Abu Dhar al Ghifari, which all of us know, which, which all of us know and is known amongst the Muslimin. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, really mastered the excellence in when people came in contact with him, وسلم, they were affected by his being. And that is what drives me to know that the Rasul is the Prophet of Allah. Various aspects about people, but the Rasul had that. And the way he dealt with people, which was, you know, that's something which, which we should inherit of the Prophet Sallallahu If we talk about inheritance, we can talk about the ilm, because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, that ilm is the waratatul anbiya, the inheritance of the Prophet But me personally, I feel, if we can just master that excellence of how to treat people in our company, then we have inherited a large amount of the Prophet Sallallahu if people come in our company, are they uplifted? Do they feel good? The Prophet used to say, Bashiru wa la tu You know? Give glad tidings. If people come into your company, so the Prophet used to make those people feel like they were the most important people. My Shaykh Shah Abdul Qadir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises maqam. When people used to come in his company, and, and I personally met various mashayikh as a student of deen, and go in search of our mashayikhs. And mashallah, every sheikh had a certain characteristic and an attribute which you generally incline towards. One of the things that really moved me about Sheikh Abdul Qadir, rahimahullah, was when you came in his company and you left, you felt like a mountain. So you'd come in his company feeling like, what, what can I do to society? What can I do to community? I'm just one person. But wallahi, when you leave, you feel like, wallahi, sometimes people used to say, you, people could see the athar, that people would say that you sat in the company of the sheikh. Because you'd come with that, we have to do this establishment, we have to do that. Now if this was only the sheikh, rahimahullah, and it's nothing compared to the Rasulullah, imagine what the sahaba felt when they sat in the company of the Rasulullah And this is something we need to really learn in life, the way we treat our wives, the way we treat our companions, the way we treat people who deserve to be in our company. Any, any person, if they're in our company, they need to know that this person is a Muhammadi. Who is this man? He's, he's something special. He... He makes me feel amazing. He makes me feel loved. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, people talk about sign language, and this is something I want to, I want to mention today. I mentioned this in the, in the khutbah before this. I said that the Quran, without a doubt, was given to the Arab. That's my opinion on the matter. The Quran was given to the Arab. If you tell somebody who is a Ajam, Singaporeans, Indonesians, Malaysians, South Africans, about the ijaz of the Qur'an, ijaz al-Qur'an. Hey, ijaz, what ijaz are you talking about? The person doesn't couldn't even read Arabic. Now when he does read Arabic, he doesn't understand Arabic. So, and this is amazing about Ajam because I was in the faculty of the Rasat Islamiyya wal Arabiya, which was one of the worst mistakes I made, right? They chose the faculty, the wrong faculty. Because I enjoyed the ulum al-Sharia, but I hated the ulum al-Arabiya. I did Urud and Nahu and Balagha and all these things which just bores you out completely. In fact, I carried one of them three years in my uni year. <laughs> Until the professor just said, you know what? He paused because Bismillah. <laughs> but I didn't enjoy Urud, Urud, what, what, you know? So if you know the Lugha, we person, you're not going to enjoy. So the Ajam, like ourselves, the foreign, we don't really understand Arabic. So how does the Quran become Ijaz? And so I believe the Qur'an was given to the Arab without a doubt. And to us as Ajim, but the Qur'an, the Ijaz part of it was given to the Arab. But I feel what led the Ajim to Islam. And I come to agreement that as the Ijaz, khulukun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Rasulullah was given to us. And when people saw him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they became Muslim. People talk about sign language today. You know sign language, you have people doing sign. The first person was... Rasulullah taught people to say La ilaha illallah when the, when the jariah and the lady who was blind and she came to the Rasul Rasulullah says Ain Allah Fa asharat ila samah 
And then he said, Waman ana? Who am I? Fa'asharat ilay, thum asharat ila sama. She said, she pointed to you, and he, Rasulullah told people to say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. When they were, when they were in sign language, this is the master of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa People who was broken, huh? people who was broken, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa took care of those people who needed just love, you know, love. People need love today. Wallahi, people need love. People just need to be loved. The way Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa treated Anas ibn Malik, and this is my topic today, is just to inherit how to treat people. If you want to be a lover of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa make people love the Rasulullah by looking at you. We can sing all the beautiful nasheeds and Wallahi, the one thing people remember is your akhlaq. If Sheikh Hassan Shah Muhsin leaves to Singapore, and the one thing that will remain with me is the smile. Something that will remain with me is the way he makes you feel. It's tawaldu. People remember characteristics. People does not remember ilm. Ilm is remembered in books and by ulama. But the general public, they remember how that person made me feel. Mashallah, I came in this company. He really made me feel good. And that was exactly who the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I asked one of my one of, one of the men of the mosque, I said, How do you think after the death of Rasulullah, Rasulullah passed away, right? How did Abu Bakr and Umar ibn Khattab, the way they loved the Rasul after his death was exactly the same way they loved him after the way they loved him in his life was exactly the same way they loved him after his death. What effects did he have on a person that when he when he left this world, the Sahaba was crying in Medina. They say it was a time of sorrow, a time of dark when Rasulullah left these people. What effect did he have, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on these people? Not only on the Quran or on the Hadith, but the personality he was. Spending time with children. Spending time with the blind. Spending time with people who was in our society, without state, without status, without, you know, maqam. He loved all. Mama Muhammad is Rasul. But Allah also said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He was that rahma, And we shouldn't hear that rahma towards the humankind. Everybody falls under the rahma of the Rasul He made young boys, oh, old ladies, subhanAllah, old lady, so we can learn this qisas of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our lady passed the majid of the, of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stands up, he goes to her, he says, what, what leads you out of this town? And she said, a man came, his name is Muhammad, and he came to break us all up. And she was slandering the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was the response of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He allowed the lady to speak, and she spoke. Until she came to the caravan, and she said to him, by Allah, whatever, whatever, whatever oath they took, by whatever gods they had, I've never met a person like you. What is your name? So if I leave the city, I'll remember you. He said, I'm the same person and the reason why you are leaving the city. He said, are you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, yes. He said, if you are the Rasul, ashadu annaka Rasulullah. This is, you know, the deen is the khuluq. Innama bu'ithu li utamima makarim al-akhlaq. Unfortunately, the sad reality is that Muslims today have, have lost that inheritance of the Rasul to make people feel bad. We are all the lovers of the Rasulullah in the majalis of, of the Mawlids. When the Mawlid is done, then we are the complete opposite of the lovers of the Rasulullah. Is that the same person who was now singing the Madh of the Rasulullah and the Akhlaq and was crying and was doing the Mawlid and he leaves and he's a completely different person. This is not the Rasulullah was perfection in every place he went. We need to inherit that. That love for people. Being there for people. Loving people. Comforting people. That is the true lovers of the Rasulullah. And that's why Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. He used to say that whenever we, whenever we come into the company of the Rasulullah وسلم, we were beautified. We were beautified in ways that the Rasulullah وسلم, beautified us. 
in our akhlaq. And that's why akhlaq and character is one of the fundamental parts of this deen. Like I said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثُّ لِأُتَمِّمَا كَارِمُ الْأَخْلَاقِ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The Prophet ﷺ says in the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the closest people to me on the Qiyamah are the man with أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا The man with the most excellent of character. How we treat people, how we make people feel. Even people who slander the Rasulullah ﷺ, they loved him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after they left his company. To a point that even those who wanted to kill the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they came in his company and the ru'ya of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they fell in love with him. And that is what all of us must embody. If one talk about inheritance of this mawlid, take away this one thing that I'm sharing with you today. Take away that to serve humanity. I wish I had a hashtag. You know, nowadays you have a hashtag. And my hashtag for 1445 was mercy to the world. That is the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every person, even Anas ibn Malik who served the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the, even the person who threw dirt in front of his home sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when she was sick, he went to visit her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People who slandered him he looked, at the, he looked for the best in them. When Abu Jahl, look at Abu Jahl, huh? Abu Jahl, which name was also Umar, Umar but Rasul called him Abu Jahl. Right? And he's known to us as Abu Jahl. But when his son Iqrimah became Muslim, what did the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say? He said, I knew from his father something good will come. <laughs> Rasulullah saw goodness even in, even in things which nobody else could see. That's the first thing I want to mention is to build the characteristics of the Rasulullah sallallahu The second thing I want to mention is this. Is that we should develop a high opinion of Allah. Husnu dhannu billah. So the first thing I want to mention is today is build your characteristics and build your character that you can develop that character so that people can come in your company and they can feel that love for the Rasulullah sallallahu if they come in your company, they must know that you are the ummah of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When people come in the company of you, they must know that you are Muhammadi. Huh? Just being in your company, they must be able to see the characteristics of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in you. And the second thing I want to mention is to have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never feel that these majalis will go for waste. Never feel that when you came out here today, you wasted your time. Every second that you are spending here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Have a high opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. billah. And the best person we, which we can inherit, inherit this from is who? Is who? The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the battle of the train, what happened? The Muslims were giving up. The Sheikh mentioned yesterday, the Rasul took his sword and he split. Which Sahaba couldn't do. But what did he say? Ana nabiyun la kathib, ana ibn Abdullah al-Muttalib. He had a high opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of you inshallah and grant us to be the true lovers of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may we inherit his beautiful characteristics. May we, may we embody this beauty, uh, akhlaq of the Rasulullah in our day-to-day -day lives, in the way we treat our families in the way we treat our neighbors, in the way we treat every person that comes in contact with us, may they get the athar, may they get that beauty of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.